coming down in three, two, one. Denton, Texas, America, and the world. It's time for the Green Guys Show. I'm a big Green Guys fan. A full hour of all things Mean Green Sports. Oh, oh. Live from the k studios on the campus of the University of North Texas. We're surrounded by North Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Green Guys Show. There's not much that gets me more fired up. The studio looks... A, so, a little bit more full. Almost normal. It I'm about does. to say somewhat it full. Does. Almost it does. full. We are short one person today. Yes. What that is the least we have been short in nearly a month. <laughs> we're getting better. We're, we're, we're making progress. Yes, we are. It's not for lack of trying. We have two special guests here. Yeah, no, we're guests at this point. Yeah. yeah. Welcome <laughs> again. Yeah. Uh, I'm Zach Babb. Uh, alongside Anthony Council. Yo. It's been the A to Z show the last three weeks yeah. with some guests. Yeah, with some surprise appearances. Some surprise appearances that we literally planned at the last minute both <laughs> weeks. Um, right. But yes, Anthony Council. And reappearing for the first time in three weeks, Cullen Brown. <laughs> has it really been three weeks? It has been three, it has weeks. Been three weeks. I think you've been generous with that. Uh, you what's going two on? shows in a row. <laughs> <laughs> you God. and the guy who I'm introducing now, Kevin Walker. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Green Guys, episode number 12. I know it's been three weeks because episode nine, we had literally everyone in here. And we were so happy that everyone was here. Because yeah. at that point, it was so long before all four of us weren't here. Yep. yep. Those and, were the uh, good old days. And now uh, now we're almost back sans uh, Blake Elliott. Yes. And it's been three weeks since we've had a trivia show. We'll see if I participate this time. Yeah. There's oh no trivia show today. <laughs> ah. So, oh, well, there you go. There's your answer. But welcome to the Green Guys, where we discuss all things North Texas sports, the good, the bad, the ugly, everything in between. And uh, we'll jump right into it here, talk a little football, because uh, oof. Mainly second half oof. Yeah. First half was... Ding, ding. Yay. We went down 14 nothing. Uh, rattled back with 21 unanswered. And then uh, UAB promptly scored 27 unanswered of their own. Started off with a Dwayne McBride three-yard touchdown run early in the first quarter. Then a one-yard Dwayne McBride touchdown run made it 14-0. Austin Ani kept it himself early in the second quarter from five yards out. Made it 14-7. Then you have the 18-yard pass from Ani to Damon Ward Jr. to tie it up at 14. Isaiah Johnson with a one-yard run made it 21-14. So there's your 21 unanswered from North Texas. And then in the dying minutes of the first half, UAB kicked a field goal to make it 21-17. And then the wheels just came off in the second half. Uh, 39-yard field goal uh, to make it 21-20. Then a two-yard touchdown pass made it 27-21. Is that the only one who heard that? No, I heard it too. My phone's yeah. I, I just or my. Phone. Okay, yeah, it wasn't I don't know. me either. I don't. I don't know. Maybe that was the bed music. I'm not sure. That was weird. Uh, back to the po- topic at hand. Um, Twenty-seven, twenty-one. Then uh, Dwayne McBride got his third touchdown run of the game, made it thirty-four, twenty-one. And then with fifty-four seconds left, Jermaine Brown Jr. Uh, ran it for a yard to make it forty-one, twenty-one. And that was your final score, as North Texas. Still in the hunt. They're bowl eligible. There wasn't wasn't any concern about that. But uh, amazingly, thanks to Western Kentucky beating Rice, North Texas is a win away still from playing in the conference championship game with a seven and five record. And we can win it. That's like some that's that's some early two thousand Sun Belt S. It is where, against, <laughs> against the aforementioned Rice too next week. Right? Yeah, where we uh, I remember we won the Sun Belt in like oh four. We went five and six and won the Sun Belt. That's back when they only played eleven games. Oh wow! So this is like early Sun Belt. What are we doing? Retro. We're awesome in conference, but we can't win out of conference type uh, <laughs> type stuff. But yes, uh, thoughts on this game, gentlemen. So one thing that stands out to me just right off the bat is another halftime adjustment situation where we were doing pretty well actually in the second quarter, but kind of fell apart in the second half. But one thing that I want to ask the guys also, 
What did we say that UNT was a running back by committee, correct, in the beginning of the year? Yes. I think there was four names that we could name that were legitimate. You know, they were going to get touches each consecutive week. Now, I know the last week's not a good reflective of this, but it seems like as of late, and someone can correct me if you think I'm wrong, but it seems like as of late, it seems as though UNT has become more of a passing offense, or at least that's what their primary focus has been trying to be. They only had 105 rushing yards last week. Now, granted, they only had 160 passing yards, but in the past few weeks, it seems as though that they've been trying to focus on the pass a little bit more. They have come out throwing a lot. Like, I think our first six plays against UAB were pass plays. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, Austin Ani's having one of the best years of his career when it comes to the pass, um, aside from those interceptions. Um, but, I mean... We, I mean, I mean he, he's really having one of the best years when it comes to the pass game. And I think that they're trying to, I guess, you know how the saying goes of um, what we talked about with, with women's basketball, live by the three, die by the three. I feel like that's what they're trying to do with a pass game. They're trying to live by the throw or die by the, die by the interception or the pick six. Um, and I think that with this game, they should have went back to their roots of just running the ball. I mean, UAB is no team to mess with. Like, like they're a good team. Like they've always been. Best. Uh, they didn't. They do have the best run defense in Conference USA. Right. And so it's like I understand that that we have we we can pass the ball, but I mean, I think with our lethal and stacked, like Kevin said, our stacked running back crew, you know, in the backfield. I I think that if we ran the ball more, I think it would have helped a lot instead of just throwing the ball all over the field. Yeah, so when we made our preseason predictions, Anthony, you were on the more optimistic side, safe to say, whereas I was on the more pessimistic side of UNT season, correct? Mm-hmm. Yes. So there's somewhere in between, correctly. Now, neither one of us right. It may, it may, depending on the last game of the season, be right for Kevin Walker and the Blake Elliott, who hopefully will be back next week. I just, this team can only win one way. And when you're a team that can only really win one way, you're not a great team in my book. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. North Texas lives and dies, like you said, by the rushing attack. Ani is not somebody that I want throwing more than they rush. Now, obviously, game script has something to do with that, obviously getting behind as much as they were against UAB. But this North Texas team, the reason they've been so successful as they are, you know, clinching another bull berth uh, under head coach Seth Luttrell, has been the rushing attack and then leaning on their front seven trying to, you know, get get ahead of the chains, get ahead of the game script and not fall behind and have to rely on Austin Ani. And in this one, it just seemed like, as you mentioned, six first plays passing. That's not something I want to ever see from North Texas again. I mean, that comes down to coaching. That comes down to schematics. That's also they did just, that against UTSA. The UTSA was their first 11 plays were pass plays. Right. And it's just, that's not who they are. And that's not who you should be. Like, I am five foot seven. I'm not trying to sit out here and go into you know high jumping on like I'm not trying to put myself in high jumping or high height competitions. I know who I am. I play to my strengths. UNT's gotta do the same thing. All right. You may not be the biggest dog in the yard. You may not have the best quarterback skills. You're limited in that regard. And that's okay. You can still perform great, like I do on this show every week, or at least every when I come on. <laughs> UNT <laughs> Yeah. They just they they need to get back to what they are. They need to find their identity. They need to get back to establishing the run. And especially going into bowl season or going into the potential conference championship game, if they knock off Rice, they need to have some sort of rhythm. Because right now, I'm not sure if it's there. I mean, 17 carries and 74 uh, yards for Akika Ragsdale to lead North Texas. I mean, that's that's great for him. Outside of that, it's not much. And like you said, Kevin, maybe that takes getting other guys involved. I mean, obviously, you know, injuries play a part. And you we know, are down half the running back room. There's it, no uh, no Iowa Day anymore. No true. Oscar Attaway. But I, whether it, you know, take somebody maybe that they're not used to, you know, getting some snaps at running back, you know, just anything to give spark this rushing attack back. I think it's going to be the key for UNT to finish this season on a high note. On top of that, you you talked about the lack of rushing, and I understand you're missing some guys. Austin Ani did step up, you know, in in his own Austin Ani type of way. He ran the ball seven times, twenty six yards. It's not horrible. He did run it in for a touchdown, but you were talking about twenty nine combined. Rushing mean, attempts you, for the you, team. You mean six yards, not 26 for Ani. It says six yards, or at least on ESPN it does. Oh, yes, net yards. He lost 20 And by yards. the way, look, stepping up, I don't look, for Ani's standards, I know they're not high. But 15 to 32, I mean, come on now. 
Yeah, that's, it's his worst completion percentage of the year. He had a... He averaged five yards per completion. He had worse odds of flipping a coin and getting heads or tails than he did completing a pass. That's not great if you're a quarterback. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, he was only sacked twice. So, I mean... I mean, is that saying much? Yeah, the offensive line? I mean, the offensive line is one of the best in football. Again, that's what I'm saying. College football again. So that's why we like, have such a great rushing attack. That's like, that's kind of like where your excuses run thin. Is you? It's not like you had horrible completion percentage. You were sacked a multitude of times, and it. You have a good old line. Like where's who, who puts who? Where does the fault fall on? You I know. I I believe it's coaching. I really do. Because on it, you know, he's attempting. It's not like he's not going out there trying. Um, execution is obviously a factor, but we've already said it that Ani has been a limited guy, and I don't. He, while he didn't, he, I think he had a, a fumble this game. Yes, he did have a fumble this game. He didn't. Other outside of that one turnover, he played, I guess, an okay game. But I, for me, I just I never want to see. Like if I look at this box score next week, and Ani threw more times than UNT attempted a rush, I'll be very upset because I just don't think that's who UNT is, and I don't think that's the identity they need to carry into the postseason. I think that's very fair. Anthony, you want to add anything? I mean, you guys really said it all. I mean, like, Austin Ani needs to play better. I, I do believe it. It has to do with the coaching, too. I mean, the the even though we have a rushing game that is kind of s- not slacking, but is uh, injured right now, um, I mean, we just got to figure things out right now because, I mean, we don't want to go into the postseason. Um, one, still injured, but just, like, not with our heads screwed onto our bodies, you know, playing football. So there you go, 41-21, the final score. We probably won't have an episode next week because next week is Thanksgiving, believe it or not. It's already here. Happy Turkey Day. So it, we can kind of look ahead. I'll, I'll look ahead to the last game of the season, Rice, here a little bit because we are we do have a bye this week. Mm-hmm. Um, two buys this year because of the Week 0 game against UTEP. Yes. So next game will be Rice. On the 26th, that is the Saturday after Thanksgiving, uh, 1 p.m. at Apogee Stadium. If North Texas wins, they clinch a berth in the Conference USA Championship game. Rice, though, first has got to play uh, UTSA this week. UTSA is probably going to throttle them. Mm-hmm. I mean, they beat La Tech 51-7. to Yeah. So, I mean... Um, but then you have a Rice team coming in here. If that if that's what happens, assuming Rice does not pull an upset, you know that would be crazy. against UTSA. <laughs> I um, wouldn't even know what to say. You uh, you Mouth have a Rice drop. you have a Rice team coming in playing for a lot because they will be five and six, and they have to win to make a bowl. And what better way to make a bowl than to also kick North Texas? out of the Conference USA Championship game and take their spot and get a bowl game. I don't want to put you on the spot here, so I'll give you some time to look this up if you don't have it pulled up already. Okay. Was I the only one that called for Rice to beat UNT before the season started? Yes, you did. Okay. And I was I'm just saying, that's a, very right? reali- that's a very realistic possibility. That's all I'm saying. What's your predictability of how right you're going to be by next next week? I mean, obviously, I want to see how they do uh, this upcoming week versus UTSA. But Rice is no joke, man. They're a lot better than I think some people had them projected at, fighting for a bull berth. Uh, their defense and offense may not look on paper as great as UNT's, but they are a feisty group, uh, averaging 227 yards passing, 152 yards on the ground. Uh, I think... If UNT does not come out and play their best game, this is UNT's game to lose. Don't get me wrong, especially at Apogee uh, to close out the season. You've got a bye week. you got to have a whole extra week to prepare for this team. It does fall on the shoulders of Austin Ani, Seth Luttrell, and this whole UNT squad. Rice, though, will look to play spoiler. And if they, especially if they don't get that win versus UTSA, I mean, playing for a bull berth, I mean, that they've got a little extra motivation. Now, UNT obviously will be trying to get into the uh, conference championship game. It it'll it could come down to a dogfight. You well, never know with these conference matchups. Well, I mean, like they got a little more than just a bull berth. I mean, they. Got I, did, com- I I did misspeak a little bit there. They would not get into the conference title game. It would oh. be Western would jump us. Oh, okay. And that's assuming Western wins. Okay. Well, because Western I'll, closes out against FAU, which is also very winnable for Western. So. Mm, okay. So, yeah. uh, but uh, they do still have a lot to play for. Yeah, very true. Rice is a good team. I mean, I I expect. 
UNT to not have the game they had against UAB to have a better game, especially with this bye week. Because um, usually after bye weeks, we play better, at least what, from what I've seen. Um, so hopefully we come out guns blazing against Rice, uh, the Rice Owls, uh, this uh, next next yes week. Yes. The 26th <laughs> of November. Right. It's, I'll say I'll finish off with this. It's hard to predict a, a win against two teams who are about as inconsistent as they come. Yeah. So you could win. You, I mean, a, either team could come in and have the game of their life, and either team could come in and just not basically not show. It, it, it's too much of a coin flip just with the inconsistency with both teams. Way to just play it right down the middle there. I'm right on the fence. Super, <laughs> super straight super to the point. Not super broad. Decisive, straight forward. Not broad at all. Hot takes coming from Kevin Walker. Well, there you go. North Texas football trying to, again, if they win against Rice on the 26th, they will play against UTSA down in San Antonio, a rematch of this earlier season game for the conference title. Amazing. That's a possibility. But yet, here we are, even with a 7-5 and five record. We'll take a short break when we come Hi, back. This is George Dunham, oh my a goodness. North Texas Athletic Hall of <laughs> You're listening to the Green Guys. You just cut we'll yourself right off. I just cut myself off by, with George Dunham. Um, we'll take a quick break when we come back. Volleyball talk here on the Green Guys. Hi, this is George Dunham, a North Texas Athletic Hall of Famer, and you're listening to the Green Guys. Oh, welcome back to the Green Guys, where we discuss all things North Texas sports, the good, the bad, everything in between. Now time to talk a little bit of volleyball. No more soccer to discuss. Soccer season is done and has been done for a couple of weeks now. But uh, volleyball, end of the regular season, closed it out really well on a three-game win streak and winners of five of six to end the year. They went. Uh, they finished their regular season fifteen and fourteen overall, but nine and five in conference play. And they head into the conference tournament taking on UAB, a team that they swept earlier in their only uh, regular season meeting uh, against UAB. The Conference USA uh, tournament, by the way, in Bowling Green, Kentucky, being hosted by Western Kentucky, who is probably the favorite to win the whole thing uh, because they're a top twenty-five ranked team. But um, just to kind of really, we won't spend too much time here on volleyball, but I do want to put a bow on their season. Um, Count me really impressed with what happened this year with Christy Porter and a new team, a lot of new faces, and uh, 9-5 and in conference. You gave Rice a scare. You close it out, winning 5-6 of and three in a row. They're kind of peaking at the right time here and hope they can keep it going in the tournament uh, starting Friday. Yeah. They, they, look, like like we've been saying like this whole entire season, and especially last week, um, UNT has just fight. That, that's, a, that's the word I can give them. It's like they have fight they have when grit. it comes to... They have want to. Yeah. They yeah. have the energy. They have the... the, the, the uh, what is it? The, the oomph? <laughs> the, the, the oomph. The oomph. The oomph. <laughs> yeah, they have the oomph. Yeah, and the great thing is the fortitude. Everything they've, they've been winning the first set. That <laughs> that's the uh, that, that's the big thing. That's the secret. Like against Charlotte, they 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 won. Obviously, it's Charlotte, but I mean, they won the first set, and then they won the whole thing. Uh, they won the first set for the last three. The, their three game win streak. They swept everybody nine and zero mm. in terms of sets. What they, is what is it? Forge, the phrase goes: Fortune favors the bold. Man, you go out there, you show up, you're willing to compete. You go out yep. there and win that first set. Yep, it yep. favors you. Yep. You know the reason why they're winning all this time because they listen to us. They do. They listen to us. That's all. Well, you know? mainly you. I was gonna say that's mainly you, Andrew. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's, that's true. that. That is. I I would love to take credit for this volleyball run, but even when I've just been, we'll just say mellow, just kind of keeping it even temperature. You're the optimist here. You're the one that gets them fired up. You may have been in a pregame speech or two, for all we know. Hey, you, you never know. You yeah, never Anthony, know. Hashtag get Anthony Council in the locker room. Hey. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> you know. But like you said, they're playing in the CUSA uh quarterfinals uh upcoming uh, at two o'clock match two uh against UAB, uh, who's number five in the bracket. Uh I think we win this game. 
against UAB. We played them once. Um, we swept beat them. them. Yeah, swept them. Um, got the broom out. Uh, dusted them with the dust pan and threw them out of the trash. And that's what we're going to do at 2 o'clock uh, in Bowling Green, Kentucky. Uh, but let me let me get off my hours. The big game I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, when we win. Uh, hopefully when we win. When against, we win. Yes, I'm being very optimistic. Yes. No, I, just, I love to highlight it. It, okay. just, it amazes me every time you do it. Thank you. Okay. Is that Western Kentucky match that if we get when we get to um, the semifinals one, Western Kentucky is going to be the biggest challenge for us. Yeah. They're not only ranked, but they have a very, very, very good team. Like all across. We were just, we were talking off air, Zach, um, uh, that it could be a Western Kentucky against Rice championship for the third year in a row by the way yeah. if that happens and it's like okay someone has to beat like someone has to take these two out in semifinal one or even in the quarterfinals like like it just can't happen again but so you're saying if north texas can beat western kentucky there's no reason they shouldn't go all the way honestly yeah i i, I, I really think if they can beat western kentucky there's no reason that Honestly, UNT could win the whole thing. If you upset a top twenty ranked team, you better win the whole tournament. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Like, like the fact that they put fear in Rice already doesn't mean that they can't do the same thing with Western Kentucky. I mean, as long as you win the first set, as long as you come out guns blazing, as long as you guys um, get me and Con in the locker room to talk you guys up and hype you guys up, then there's no reason why you guys should not beat Western Kentucky. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to be very hard. So. Before we get there, we're gonna take it. We're gonna take one match at a time. Beat UAB, and then we'll talk about Western Kentucky. But I've talked a lot, Cullen. Go, go ahead. That's a lot to follow up on. Sorry, buddy. My bad. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> Always bringing the energy, Anthony Council. We do appreciate that on this episode. I'll add this. I do agree that I like UNT's chances against UAB in the quarterfinals. I think that this team has been riding off a hot winning streak, like Zach said peaking at the right time it's very important momentum is a real thing in sports it's not it can't be measured but just something that unless you watch sports as religiously as the four of us do you gotta understand yeah and unt i believe has that right now and i like their odds against uab i like christy porter's moxie i love the way that she fires them up in terms of going into the locker room i you know i'll hold a sign up or anything i don't know if i can <laughs> quite match anthony's energy so i'm just gonna i'm gonna play my role you know i'm just gonna make sure and that's what unt players should do the whole volleyball team Make sure you know your role. Make sure you come out with that energy and just go overall. If you, as long as you compete, this team could the sky's the limit. Honestly, I mean, if they especially if they knock off UAB, I'm just saying four wins going into a, a matchup potentially with Western Kentucky. Ooh, doggy! I'm just saying, That's scary. And, and not only that, and I know we're sitting here talking about the Western Kentucky matchup, but you have to focus on one game at a time. You got to focus on the UAB game first. And then look ahead and see where you're at after that game. Don't don't look at every game and every every game that you're gonna have in the bracket if you make it. Don't look at the if ands or buts. Just look at the next game you got going. Um, I, I, obviously, y'all mentioned getting the the right you know hitting the right spark at the right time. I would just want to say from an like an outside you know looking from how am I gonna word this? Looking now from where the season started. It's not very often that a new head coach has a great season or even makes it to the playoffs in their first season either. I think whether they get far in the in the playoffs or if they, you know, worst worst comes the worst and they lose first game, I think you still look at this as a successful season. You look at this as a great hire and things are going up. The trend is going up. It's been a great season regardless of what happens. I would tend to agree with that. Again, North Texas and UAB in the first round of the Conference USA tournament for volleyball. That gets underway at 2 p.m. Friday the 18th. It's uh, shaping up to be a very sport-filled week slash weekend here for uh, North Texas. Coming up, we talk basketball. This is John Hedlund with the North Texas soccer team, and you're listening to the Green Guys. One last segment here on the Green Guys as uh, we shift gears to talk a little basketball. Um, it was oof. Oof. That's a good word. It yeah. was oof. Yeah. Um, Anthony just loves the bed music. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. 
I'm here, y'all. Um. So yes, North Texas played against uh, St. Mary's College, a road game. Uh, so we're starting with men, by the way. If you didn't know, um, probably one of their toughest opponents of the year, especially being on the road. Because this is a St. Mary's team that like beat Gonzaga last year. I was about to say they're almost regularly a uh, tournament team, are they not? Yeah, yeah. they usually yeah. get in that large bit if they don't right. upset Gonzaga for the West Coast Conference title. Not a foreign name. Um, but it was ugly. Ugly. Um, they uh-huh. lost sixty-three to thirty-three, thirty-point loss. Um, it was thirty-one to four at one point. Not good. This is coming off the heels of lose or not losing, almost losing to a Division II team, albeit a very good Division II team in Southern Nazarene. They were the twelfth ranked D two team in the country. Um, Division no two. Tyler Perry, no Reuben Jones, as both recover from injury, and then a flu outbreak hit the team this past week. So they didn't even practice until they got on the court for shoot around the night before. And at St. Mary's, and uh, yeah, it was not a good game. Thirty-one down, thirty-one to four, lost sixty-three to thirty-three. Opinions, gentlemen. Anthony, you got to start, brother. Well, you know, flu game doesn't happen to everybody. You know, not everybody's name is Michael Jordan. You know, but uh, all I can say is, if you, <laughs> when you're playing against St. Mary's, you got to at least practice. Like, you at least have to try to practice. I, I understand. Virtual, virtual practice. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Vir- virtual practice? Freaking that, that Zoom works. practice. <laughs> but I was watching this game, and I was just like, oh, my gosh. Whoa. Like, Kevin said off air, you know, I don't think UNC showed up this past weekend at all for basketball, football, nothing. Because 33 to 4? I mean, they could not make a bucket. They could not. They were one of their first 19 from the floor. Like, gross. That's bad. Like, in the first half, in the first half, I mean, 7 for 21. Like, you shoot 25% in the first half for from the, from the three-point line. 14.81 from field goal range. 4 for 27 in the first half. 3 for 12 in the, in the first half from three. I mean, look, at least at least Huntsbury can shoot free throws. We learned that when he closed out Southern Nazarene. I mean, I was happy about that because I, look, we need that. If we can get him to the free throw line, at least I know we can get some points on the board from the free throw line. I don't care if it's one or two, yeah. but St. Mary shot them out of the park. They shot them out of California, shipped them right back to Denton, Texas. I'll say this. I'm surprised we scored 33 points, honestly. <laughs> I'm surprised we scored 33, and I'm suppo- and I'm surprised honestly they didn't score more than 63. I know that's saying a lot, but I really don't think it is. And and I'm not, you know, we're sitting here saying, you know, like I did say, I don't. It doesn't even seem like UNT showed up. And I'm not gonna sit here and say it's no fault of their own because it's a man up, next man up mentality, no matter what sport it is. But you gotta, you gotta have some kind of. Hey, first team can't go. Second team's got to go. We kind of had this problem last year, too. Our depth is not great. We have stars on starting, and we're trying to replace new. We're trying to replace guys from last year, but the depth has always been a concern for men's basketball. Always has been a concern. Tyler Perry's out. Ruben Jones is out. Had a flu outbreak. Thank you. Thank God for Kai Hunsberry, or else we would probably not have 33 points. I'm going to say that for sure. And what I will say, and on the positive note is, that St. Mary's is the best competition that we're going to play all year. It just sucks that we couldn't have the real squad out there. I don't feel like we've actually seen UNT basketball yet. I think that that's how I, I agree. See. I, agree I don't with think that. we've seen their actual potential yet. We haven't seen Tyler Perry and Huntsbury on the floor if they're going to be on the floor at the same time. Right. We haven't seen Jones yet, and I don't know when we will because you know he's coming back from that injury. Whenever we see them at full strength, I'll start assessing the team. Right now, we haven't seen anything. It sucks that we couldn't see how we could have matched full strength against a really, really good school. Um. 
it i'm not downing the, the the season yet it just sucks that we've started this way and i hope we can get the full strength soon so a lot was said there that i'm trying to digest so obviously tyler perry and reuben jones did not play yes did abu abu play yep. abu played yes aaron scott play yep yep um can you please explain to me why we out got outscored in the paint 28 to 8 if those mm. two played? I mean, when you that, go 0 for 9 from field goal range and 1 for 2 from the free throw line, I mean, it says a lot. Well, and Abu did not have a game. No, he did not. And that's somebody that we were hoping to take a step up. Both those guys, actually. Abu and Aaron Scott, more elevated roles from last year. Obviously, Thomas Bell no longer with us. He graduated. I was really looking for these two. Again, I understand that Tyler Perry, who's going to be the offensive catalyst more often than not, and Ruben provides that extra spark extra bit of floor spacing, extra defense and everything. We're going to miss those guys severely. And as Kevin mentioned, maybe we weren't even expected to win this game. One thing that you cannot have, and I'm sure Coach McCaslin has preached this in practice, is a lack of effort. And getting beat up by 20 in points in the paint is something that's inexcusable for a Grant McCaslin defense last year that was one of the best in the country. I understand. Was the best in the country. There you go. And I know we talked to Tyler and Aaron during the offseason on our separate podcast. Don't, no cross promotion here. But we talked about how they wanted to sh- kind of shift their, you know, kind of philosophy in terms of a basketball team, going from more of a defensive minded team to a more offensive led team. And again, Tyler being probably the offensive catalyst, not being there, had something to do with that. I, Abu and Aaron, this is a game where you got to step up. I understand St. Mary's is one of the better teams, that not only that UNT will face, but just in the nation, period. They deserve their respect for what they do to Gonzaga every year. But this is something that I wish I would have seen more fight from them. I believe they kind of bent or rolled over pretty quickly. And that's something that I really didn't see from last year's team hardly at all. Whether that's senior leadership, whether that's coaching, I'm not sure. But this is something I know Grant McCaslin is addressing. If I know basketball worth any any bit that he's addressing this this week, the lack of fight. And I'll, 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 I'll go on top of that. If we know McCaslin and how he coaches this team at all. I wouldn't be surprised if we went undefeated from this point on based off this loss. It doesn't they they they're really good at rebounding when it comes so. to a loss. I hope a, they go undefeated from 30 here. point <laughs> loss. I don't even want to be in that locker room to be honest. In after, fact, I will the game, I will add it, anything like an that. interesting tidbit to that. I was running the board for the radio call. Grant who normally, you know, very very gracious with the media did not even come out for his post-game okay. interview That's what I like with, to hear. Uh, with the radio network. Not, <laughs> not for you not for you and everybody in the media who is expecting to talk to Grant, but as a fan of the North Texas basketball team, that's what I'd love to hear. As a journalist, I that love to sucks, hear that. but as a fan, that's a, yeah, I agree. That's exactly what you want to hear. You want to go... Yeah, they were in the locker room for literally 30 minutes after that. Yeah, I'm sure. This yeah. should be the last game. Hank and I, we got out. The game ended at... About eight forty, and we stalled until about nine fifteen, and they were still not out of that locker room. Jaden Martinez was the only one who scored in double figures. He had thirteen points. Abu had one point. This should be the last game. He's, the, he only, has one he's the only one that had a double digit stat. So literally, just for clarification, when we're on next week, there's there will have been one game played for men's basketball before the Fresno State. Correct? Fresno State. Yes. Yep, at okay. Home. I. I really hope that whenever we talk about Abu and Aaron Scott next week, there's a little bit of different, uh, little different uh, narrative going around. Let's just put it that way. Oh, let's I hope there's that, not a flu. I'm going to be definitely keeping an eye on that one when they play Fresno State. I want them to listen to this. I want them to listen. You know, I'm not trying to hide myself up, but I want them to listen to me because, like, I am <laughs> hot. I'm like, like I had them. I, I had them not winning this game, but getting very close just because of. Last year's defensive outburst. I don't, I don't know, man. It's like if full strength. I'm talking full strength North Texas basketball. I'm not going to say they're capable of anything, but hell, man, if you can knock off Purdue and you can keep everything that you've got going on, I would love, love to see in this game. It's I, true. I mean, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I'm not going to say it's a coin flip. I'm not going to say that they had you know legit shot being St. Mary's. I don't know. That, that's the point that I'm going. I don't know how this game would have ended. I would have just loved to tune in and be like, I want to see how we compete against some legit competition. Yeah. Okay. I'll I'll give some leeway. They were not at full strength. That's true. And they did have a flu outburst, and you can't predict that. But to Colin's point, you at least have some type of effort. Like four points in, in 30, like 
It's like they 33. Lost. It's like they lost before they went there. Exactly. It's just like they didn't want to. And I get it. They had the flu pandemic. And that's something that Zach correctly pointed out before he went in. At that point, the fans don't care. If you show up and you put on a jersey and you're out there on the court, no one cares. They yep. expect you to be at 100%. I agree. And that's the reality of an athlete. So there you go. Men's basketball falls to St. Mary's 63-33. One last thing to talk about here on the Green Guys, and that is women's basketball. As uh, they've only played one game. Well, they technically two. They played an exhibition against uh, Texas A&M International, and then they took down uh, Texas A&M Texarkana in their season opener. 71 to 58 was your final score in that game. Um, a game that had its fair share of mistakes and errors here and there. I know Jaylee Mitchell was not the happiest coach in the world uh, post game. Um, there were a lot of turnovers. They didn't quite dominate the glass like they probably should have. The transition game was a little sloppy. Uh, but I still led by as much as 19 over a NAIA school. End up winning by 12 after uh, AM Texarkana kind of came back in the fourth a little bit. But a lot of good standout performances. I believe it was four players in three. double figures or three? Three. Three. three, three excuse players. me. Uh, Quincy Noble had eight. But Tamisha Lampkin. Had a double double <laughs> in the first half. Ooh, she had man. she had fifteen and ten at the break. Let me tell you something about Tamisha Lampkin. She is the anchor of that team. I know we talk about you know Quincy Noble. I know we talk about Jacqueline Moore. Okay, they're like the two dynamic guards. Okay, Lampkin. She is the anchor of that team. When it comes to being a big man in the middle, she had how many rebounds in like the first half? Ten. That ten rebounds. Yeah, five on each side. Ended up finishing with fifteen. Right. I mean, she, like, I mean, she would would put up the shot, get her, get like if if it missed, she would get her own rebound, put it back up again, put it back up again, put it back up again. Like that's that fight that you need, especially from your center or from from your big man. And that's what Tamisha Lampkin is. I mean, I think you know we 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 talked about this before of how um she needs to she needs to step up this season. Yeah, this is a great start. This is definitely a huge start. It's going to be a big test. This upcoming weekend, um, again, well, actually, two games, they're playing actually Wednesday, right? Wednesday against SFA, that was a tournament team last year, and then Saturday against Wichita State. Yeah, that Wichita game, that's going to be a big test for her because uh, I, I think she, I think if she keeps the momentum that she's had, even though it's been one game, if she does the same thing she just did that day tomorrow and against Wichita, that's going to be a big test. But Tamisha Lampkin is is really the anchor uh, for the Mean Green Women's team. Yeah, I know as a sophomore last year, she was a really big contributor, especially, I, th- I believe she came off the bench last year. Yeah, for the most part, yeah. And she was a really impactful player last year. She seems to have stepped up the game this year. Obviously, you mentioned Anthony Quincy Noble, the former preseason uh, Conference USA Player of the Year, I believe. She is definitely somebody that I'm going to keep an eye on. Really, it's just the senior guard being the mature one, getting uh, in and out of the offense, making sure players get in their spots. She's got a whole level of responsibility that she had a little bit last year, but as a senior, higher expectations. I mean, that's just the reality. My whole question is, is that because I think you know this probably best covering the team. Well, you know, doing play by play for the team. The turnover has been insane for this team. Jaylee Mitchell's yeah. had to deal with a lot of turnover, a lot of players either graduating, transferring, etc. Do you know off of their main, because I think it was like seven or eight key women that used to play per, you, yeah. in the main game. They brought back six, only two starters. Right. One of which is healthy, Quincy right. Noble. Right. Jalen Mallard's going to be out for an extended period of time. Right. And, um, and then you have nine newcomers this year. That's that's something that's the most in the eight years that Jaylee Mitchell's been here, and that's something that she's gonna have to adjust. It's, just, it's really gonna test her coaching prowess. I'm really excited to see what this North Texas women's team could do. Obviously, they had a really I don't I wouldn't call it uh, underdog story, but I mean they ultimately did not have the regular season that some thought that they would. They ended up getting to the tournament time, and I believe they got to the semifinals. Semifinals, yep. And that was something that I thought again peaking at the right time. We talked about it earlier for volleyball. This team. We'll see their identity with all these newcomers and everything, but I am really excited to see how Coach Mitchell does with the squad. Again, she's got her she got her anchor. She got Quincy Noble. She got Tamisha Lampkin. Obviously, we'll see when Mallard comes back how her role is, but I'm really excited for this year's squad. You talk about the starters, 
And I want I want the men's basketball side to take note of this. 20 points off the bench for the women's yeah. side. Huge. Big time. I was going to say this. That's the thing is you're going to go ahead. Andrew. Like the women have more depth than the men. Like they their their depth is so deep. I mean, that, you can get 20 points off the bench any given night, and you can get these numbers. I mean, we're talking two of four field goals, three of five field goals, two of three three points. I mean, if you can get that from your bench, and your starters are going to be running the floor, and, and yeah, I mean, that, that's a good looking team all the way around. That I mean, that's that's what you want to see. Yeah, it's it's crazy, and uh, uh, I think another person who because I think that that what they've done very well is, and we've talked about this before of the transfer portal has been very good for them uh getting Jacqueline Moore who averaged like 17, 17 points 17 yeah at UIW last year yeah averaging 17 points last year and coming I here I told you did I bring up her 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 astronomical three point numbers you said wait i remember she shot 222 three pointers at incarnate word and North Texas last year as a team shot 500. Yeah. I'm, I'm amazed Anthony was able to put a stat to memory. That's crazy. I know, right? Usually he just guesses the correct <laughs> thing out of the, out of nowhere. Last show which I he did, did which he did again I last mean, week. Yeah, he's very uh, intuitive that way. Yeah, but yes. hey, we love you, Anthony. <laughs> Appreciate it. But yeah, having Jacqueline Moore uh, on that team is going to be huge. Um, I think the depth is great for this women's team. It's going to be a test against Wichita. I think that they're going to take care of business tomorrow too. Um, but Wichita, I mean, they are a they're a good team, but I, I, I think I still think it's gonna be a test for them. I still think they're gonna win the game after going through the stats and what Wichita's done. Um, but I still think it's gonna be a test, just to see. I mean, because after this game all the way up until December first, it's gonna be a road um trip all the way until the new year, which is gonna be insane. So and then it's conference play, so we'll just see. But I think right now they're playing fantastic. They got to work on the turnovers, and if they get that, uh, it's smooth sailing for the Mean Green Women's team. One last player I want to give credit because we talked about the other two that scored double figures: Brianna Davis, the freshman from Red Oak, Texas, um, seven to 10, 10 points from a freshman. You'll take that any day of the week. Got to okay. give her some credit too. Yeah. Well, there you go, women's basketball. There, uh, they've got two games this week. Again, Wednesday, six thirty at home against Stephen F. Austin, and then they hit the road to take on Wichita Saturday, Wichita State uh, Saturday at uh, two p.m. from Charles Koch Arena in Wichita, Kansas. That'll do it for another episode of the Green Guys. Thanks for listening, everybody. Hi, I'm Vern Lundquist. I do a little bit of work for CBS Sports, and I'm just inviting all of you guys to listen to the Green Guys. And they'll talk about the mean green. And I know Joe Green. Joe Green. Joe Green. Joe Green.